Chapter 9 Live with the hope of the eternal inheritance of heaven. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 39. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour our adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment, do you suppose, will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall your former days in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated, for you had compassion on me in my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise, for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Today, I want to speak about the spiritual priest manifested in the book of Hebrews. Firstly, I want to look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 20. It says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh. By giving us the gospel of the water and the Spirit, God the Father has granted us the role of a priest of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus gave up his body for us. He has opened the door of the kingdom of heaven. He has opened the door of the kingdom of heaven by the baptism he received with his body and the blood he shed on the cross. We know that Jesus is the high priest of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus blotted out all our sins at once by the baptism he received from John the Baptist and the blood he shed on the cross. Actually, a person who truly believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit from the heart has received the cleansing of all sins. Our Savior, who is the Creator, came to this world as a human, received the baptism from John the Baptist, and received the judgment for all sins by being crucified on the cross in order to save us who were sinners. The Lord saved us who believed in the gospel of the water and the spirit all at once. It is written, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 By hearing and obeying the word. It means that Jesus washed away all our sins absolutely by the baptism he received from John the Baptist and the blood he shed on the cross. We are truly blessed people. Therefore, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. The righteous have hope in the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, hear this. If we just received the remission of sins and had our sins blotted away by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit 
and we did not enter the kingdom of heaven, then we would be missing the mark more than anyone else. What, then, would be the difference between a person who has sin and a person who does not have sin if that person who believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit did not enter the kingdom of heaven? But even so, if such a person who believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit did not enter the kingdom of heaven, such a person would still feel more peaceful in his heart compared to a person who does not believe. However, God has granted both the remission of sins and the kingdom of heaven at the same time to all those who will genuinely believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit from the heart. Therefore, the city of heaven, which is manifested in the book of Revelation, is so immense. In the book of Revelation chapter 22, God said, I give you a new heaven and a new earth, and there is no need for lights in this new heaven and new earth, for God will be this light. God has given the new heaven and the new earth to those who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, and has given the blessing of never suffering again and never shedding tears again to those who truly believe and come into the kingdom of heaven. And God said further, In the kingdom of God there will be a city made of twelve precious stones, trees that bear fruit every month, and the river of life which is as clear as crystal. God said that he will grant a new heaven and a new earth to those who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. We all have received the promise of the remission of sins and the kingdom of heaven by the faith of believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. If someone has received the remission of sins and does not have a hope of going to heaven, then such a person lives a miserable life. However, many righteous people live without knowing this fact and they do not know exactly why God has given them the remission of sins. God remitted our sins away in order to give us the kingdom of heaven. Only those who have received the remission of sins and whose names are recorded in the book of life may enter the kingdom of heaven because they obey God by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars cannot and will never be allowed to enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, But recall the former days in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 32 through 39. The Lord shall appear to those who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. The Lord will indeed return in a short while. The righteous will for sure meet the Lord after living their lives while believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, which is the righteousness of God. The word of God says, The just shall live by faith. This is why we, by the faith, possess the kingdom of heaven while believing in the true gospel of Christ. Because we have received the remission of sins by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, we can by faith also have the kingdom of heaven. So in order to possess the kingdom of heaven, we must have faith and believe in the word of God. The Lord has in fact given us, who believe, the kingdom of God, and we must live our lives with this hope and faith. We must therefore live by faith while believing in the righteousness of God and never place our hope in this world. With this kind of spiritual attitude, we can live in this world boldly and happily without shame because of possessing such a hope. All of us must know that we are going to the kingdom of heaven in the near future, 
after preaching the gospel of the water and the Spirit. We thus thank God and live our lives accordingly by returning glory to Him, because this truth lives within of us. Now, the only thing left for us to do is to enter the kingdom of heaven by believing in God's word, that He has in fact cleansed all our sins away with clear water and opened the door of the kingdom of heaven for us. The servant of God who recorded the book of Hebrews is admonishing us to be cautious lest the word of God drift away from our hearts. He is saying that, no matter how much the word of God tells us, that the Lord has given us the kingdom of heaven, and that he has given us the remission of sins by the gospel of the water and the spirit, we will not have the ministry of God if we do not hold on to all of God's word. No matter what kind of ministry we do, we must have the faith that believes in all of the promises of God. We must thus pray, Lord, we are living by the faith while believing in your word. Lord, fulfill all these things you have spoken to us about. We do believe that you will fulfill all the things you have promised. Like this, we can fulfill the work of God faithfully when we live by the faith while believing in the word of God. God works in hearts that truly believe in him. The apostles and the saints of the early church lived by the faith while knowing and believing that the new heaven and the new earth belong to them. Therefore, they were not disappointed in losing the things of this world and instead lived their lives boldly by faith. God gives us a new heaven and a new earth because he saved us from all our sins. Because the saints of the early church did not give up their boldness or faith, God will indeed give them the kingdom of heaven. They were not fearful of losing the things of the world, but instead were thankful that they would in return receive the kingdom of heaven. It's because they lived their lives of faith while believing that the Lord will give them a new heaven and a new earth in the kingdom of heaven. They went to the Lord by faith after waiting for the advent of the Lord. All the saints that went before have died, and their flesh is now asleep. However, they will rise from where they are once the Lord returns. The righteous today are the people who shall possess the kingdom of heaven by faith also. We are the people who shall indeed possess a new heaven and a new land. God has given a new heaven and a new land to us who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. When looking up, we see the sky with our naked eyes, and likewise, the earth below we see also. But the Lord said that the time will come when he will destroy the heavens and this earth that we see with our fleshly eyes. Interesting to hear the environmentalists say that the destruction of this world will come due to natural calamities. They say all these scientific progresses are all in vain. Some environmental scientists have claimed that the end of this earth will come about between 1050 AD to 2100 AD. Environmentalists thus dislike progressive thinking people. Why so? It's because these people want to save the world, but to them this world is slowly being destroyed. But on the other hand, we who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit are fortunate because we have a place to escape to, even if the earth is destroyed. We, the people of God, must hold on to the righteousness of the Lord by the faith while believing in the truth that God will give us a new heaven and a new earth. If we do this, then we can live in the midst of such calamities by faith. Brothers and sisters, we can live a spiritual life faithfully only if we have such a clear faith. It would be boring and frustrating if we did not have such a hope in the kingdom of heaven after receiving the remission of sins. Would we be able to preach the gospel of the water and the spirit properly if we did not have such a faith and hope? I think about such things a lot. I think the city in the kingdom of heaven is not such a small place. A moment ago I told you that the wall of the house of the kingdom of heaven is about two-thirds of the land of China. I was not speaking about the entire land. I was saying that the wall is like that. The righteous will live in a city built with all kinds of precious stones. When reading about this in the word, 
we must take note that the size of the city spoken about here is only speaking about the house where the righteous will live in. This house is that big, and I don't think it's proper to say that the number of people who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit is that small either. God will absolutely fill the number of the righteous according to his will. God will indeed fill this number with his special work. It is recorded in the scriptures that the number of people receiving salvation will increase substantially when the destruction of this earth comes about. Thus, everyone must now take hold of this truth of believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit that we are preaching today by faith. When the tribulation starts on this earth, many will then have to pay the price to actually believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit alone. At that time, their lives will be on the line to believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit as the truth of salvation. Such things will indeed happen when the Antichrist is revealed in the world. It's because the end of the world, the period of Satan, is getting that much closer. However, I believe that God will save many sinners even until the very last moment. This is because God wants to keep the promise he has made. The world God gives to the righteous will be the new heaven and the new earth, and the house they will be living in will be made up of twelve most precious stones, like glistening jasper stone and rubies. Since God has built such a beautiful house, there must, of course, be the righteous to live in it. It would not make any sense at all if there weren't any such people to live in such a huge and beautiful house. This is why God told his people to build the kingdom of heaven. And so I preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, and I believe this is building the kingdom of God. We must believe that Jesus has washed away all our sins and made us enter the kingdom of heaven by the clear water of the gospel of the water and the spirit. We must live by faith while believing in the completed work of Jesus. And we must also live with the hope of the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, the scripture teaches us that the Lord who was to come will indeed return soon. That day is not too far away. If God does not take me away by the time I turn 50 years old, there is a great possibility that I will greet the Lord while I am still alive. God said that he will destroy this world and give us a new heaven and a new earth. This earth cannot be maintained in this current state. God has clearly promised the righteous that he will give them the millennial kingdom. God said that he will give us the kingdom for a thousand years. God, the master of all things, will give us a new heaven and a new earth and make us become kings in that kingdom for sure. We cannot live in this land forever. This land we are living in must eventually be destroyed. God said that he will give us a new heaven and a new city within heaven for us to go and live in. We must live the spiritual life with the new heaven and new earth set in our hearts. After receiving the remission of sins, we must not be thinking only, I do not have sin anymore, but have this hope of the new heaven and the new earth we are going to. Because our sins have been expunged from our hearts, it means that we have consequently received the kingdom of heaven as a free gift. And because we, by faith, believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, it is the evidence that we possess the kingdom of heaven. The saints of the early church also live their lives of faith while believing that God has given them the kingdom of heaven. And their physical bodies also entered into this Sabbath of rest. We are now living right in the end of the world. Therefore, if we don't put our hope in the kingdom of heaven that is to come, we will fall away into this world and will start living according to its laws. In addition to the millennial kingdom, a new heaven and a new earth, that is, the new Jerusalem are indeed ours. You and I, who have received the remission of sins, possess the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, the new heaven and the new earth of the kingdom of heaven belongs to the righteous. The wall built with twelve precious stones are ours. We who have received the remission of sins are by faith sitting by the river of life. Therefore, the work God has given you and me to do is to spread this true gospel to everyone so that they can be saved also. 
and we must live with this hope in our hearts that God has indeed given us the kingdom of heaven. We must enjoy this hope in our hearts that says by faith, I will live there in the future, and I will enter the kingdom of heaven in the future and enjoy all of its glory. The Apostle Paul said, The sufferings of this great present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 While living in this world, we must live with the kind of faith that we will indeed enter and live in the kingdom of heaven in the future. This is the kind of faith we have received in these end times. The kingdom of heaven will surely come to us soon. Our Lord will return and take us away to be with him. The scriptures say that our Lord will give us a new heaven and a new earth, and the Lord will make us kings in that place in the very near future. Do you know the place the righteous will go to? It is the new heaven and a new earth. It is the new Jerusalem. I truly believe in Jesus. I believe that God will expand the kingdom of heaven soon. And to achieve his will, this gospel will expand the kingdom of heaven by the righteous spreading it all over the world. A new heaven and a new earth belong to the righteous now by faith. I believe if someone has been truly born again by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, then that person is included in this group called the righteous. You and I, that is, those of us who genuinely believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, are the very people who will enter the kingdom of heaven. Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 8 says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Our God has said here that he will indeed give us a new heaven and a new earth. Brothers and sisters, we must live our lives of faith by believing in this word. We must hold on to this word of God. Sadly, Many people will not be receiving this gift of salvation because they refuse to have faith of believing in this free gift that God gives. Brothers and sisters, the kingdom of heaven is like that. The kingdom of heaven is only possible if God gives faith and we believe. The kingdom of heaven has thus been given to us who have believed. We must receive this truth in our hearts and possess it by faith while we live in this world. We cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if we do not have this genuine faith of believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. Brothers and sisters, the ultimate goal for having endurance and hope is the end goal, the kingdom of heaven. We cannot keep our faith if there is no kingdom of heaven at the end. If there were no kingdom of heaven, then when tribulation and persecution comes to the righteous, they will give up their faith. But because the kingdom of heaven is a reality, we can overcome all trials and tribulations by having our hope in it. And with the truth of faith in our hearts, we believe in a new heaven and a new earth as the scripture says. So, with the word of God in our hearts, we can endure all tribulations and hardships and live a true spiritual life faithfully until the end. We can also become victorious Christians 
leading many souls into the kingdom of heaven until the end. Therefore, we must have this kind of faith of believing that the kingdom of heaven is ours. Brothers and sisters, do you understand? God has given the kingdom of heaven to those who fight and become victorious by faith. The book of Revelation states that God will give some of the hidden manna to those who overcome. God said that he will give the tree of life to those who overcome. We find these promises in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. God has indeed prepared and given the kingdom of heaven. God has given the kingdom of heaven to those who truly believe. God has given us salvation. God has washed away all our sins by the baptism of Jesus. God has also washed away all the sins of the people living in the world all at once. The Lord washed away our sins cleanly at once. The Lord has blotted out all our sins by the baptism he received upon his body and the blood he shed on the cross. We must thus fight and be overcomers by the faith while firmly believing in the word of God. Someone who truly believes in the word of God and who fights and overcomes Satan and his devils possesses the kingdom of heaven. However, if a person loses his battle of faith, he will not possess the kingdom of heaven. We must carefully hear, understand, and believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, and then we will receive the remission of sins. Some people tell us that the gospel of the water and the spirit we believe in and preach is a wrong gospel. They question it, saying, Where in the scriptures does it say that John the Baptist is a high priest, and where does it say literally that the sins of the world were passed over to Jesus when he received the baptism from John the Baptist? When the servants of Satan and his demons attack the righteous like this, they will start losing the battle if they start wavering in their thinking, saying, Is this really correct? Or, I think it is correct. Even if people accept the gospel of the water and the spirit into their hearts, they will start losing their faith if they lose the battle against these deceivers. We must become victorious people of the faith by believing in our hearts that this kingdom of heaven has been granted to us by Jesus. The promise of the kingdom of heaven becomes a reality when a person takes this true gospel as his own. The kingdom of heaven is given to a person who overcomes by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, even when Satan and his demons attack. The tree of life in the kingdom of heaven is given to a person who overcomes, and the land of Canaan in the Old Testament was also given to those who were victorious. In the book of Revelation, the Lord continually speaks of the one who overcomes, and he gives the tree of life to the one who overcomes. Even if people have heard the gospel of the water and the spirit, God will grant the kingdom of heaven to only those who have received the remission of sins by faith. The deceivers, whoever they might be, will continually attack those who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. During this time, they must hold on to the word of God while believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit and overcome by faith, saying out aloud, Satan, depart from me. If you are passive and do not fight back, even when the enemy attacks you, then the enemy will attack you even more and try to take your faith away. In the book of Ephesians, the Lord told us to fight against Satan with his word and become victorious by faith. The Lord promised us that if we have faith in him and his word, then he will not give us the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, not anyone can just arbitrarily enter that kingdom of heaven. And not anyone can receive salvation from their sins just because they have heard the gospel of the water and the spirit. A person cannot be united with God's church just because they have heard the gospel of the water and the spirit somewhere. A spiritual war always takes place for a person's soul who hears the gospel. When this happens, the one who hears and understands must fight by the faith while believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit and become victorious. After coming to know the righteousness of the Lord, I found out that the entire world has a false gospel that cannot save anyone from its sins. Because of this fact, 
All sinner Christians throughout the entire world have become my enemy, even if no one ever told them so. I refute against their faith ruthlessly. When I challenge their faith and say their faith is false, they ask me if I am Luther, and I respond, I am not Luther, but there is no law that says I cannot be greater than Luther. I tell them, Luther is but Luther, and I am just me. The correct faith is believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, as the scriptures say. A false gospel is a false gospel, no matter how long its history and tradition are, and the true gospel is the gospel of the water and the spirit. I am attacked by many sinner Christians. Even when these people challenge me and attack my faith, I defeat them all by believing and having faith in the word of God. There were times when seminary students gathered in my room and attacked me, and there were times when pastors gathered together and attacked me as well. Also, there were times when many denominations attacked me, but I just said, all of you, come and attack me. I will overcome by the faith while believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. Go ahead and claim that the gospel you believe in and preach is the true gospel. Go ahead and proclaim that gospel even by reaching back to the faith of your ancestors. No matter how much they attack me, the fight is all over with when I overcome them with the word of God and show them how the gospel of the water and the spirit is recorded in the scriptures. Their false faith is destroyed with just one shot of the word of God. No matter how big or strong Goliath was, he fell by the five smooth stones of David. This faith that believes in the word of God can be victorious against any attack of the devil. The Lord said, He who overcomes shall inherit all things. God said that he shall give the kingdom of heaven to those who fight against the deceivers and overcome them by his word. It is written, The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation chapter 21, verse 21 through 27. The kings of earth mentioned here is referring to you and me who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. There are many people today who believe in false gospels and many liars. Among them are those who say that they do not have any sin, even as they just believe in the blood on the cross, while rejecting the water and the spirit. When I ask them repeatedly whether they honestly have sin in their heart or not, with such a faith, they finally tell the truth and confess that they still have sin. There are some who claim to not have sin like this, even though the word of God states that sin cannot be blotted out with a faith like that. When I ask them again whether they do have sin or not, they confess that they do have sin, responding very differently from when they answered the first time. But when I first ask them whether they really had sin or not, they said they did not have any sin. In the conversation I ask them whether they are fearful or not, they reply that they are a little scared. And now when I ask them whether they really do have sin or not, they testify that they do have little sin. If I ask them ten times like this repeatedly, they will admit that they still have sin. Jesus took all the sins of the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars away with the water and the spirit. Jesus came to this world and took all our sins upon himself by receiving the baptism with clear water. Jesus received the full judgment on the cross in our place by going down to the Jordan River at the start of his earthly ministry and received baptism for our sins. We must thus believe that the Lord has cleansed our sins away with the water baptism he received. 
from John the Baptist, and that he received the judgment for our sins by being crucified. No one can say without absolute certainty, I do not have sin. I am a righteous person. I am a child of God, if they not possess this true faith. Without this faith, no one can make such a claim. In the kingdom of God, one cannot become a righteous person just because he has much ability with words and with clever words says that he really does not have sin. Instead, such a person must indeed have no sin at all in order to become a righteous person. God gives the eternal kingdom of heaven to those who do not have sin. I repeat, God gives the kingdom of heaven to these kinds of people only. God gives the kingdom of heaven as an inheritance to those who overcome, and those who lose their faith will face the judgment. Even after receiving the remission of sins, one cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if such a one unites with the deceivers. Sadly, there are some among the servants of God who have given up and lost the spiritual battle. They are truly foolish people. They are no different from those who, like Esau, sold their birthright as the firstborn for a mere bowl of soup. Esau could have received all the blessings as his own if he had just waited calmly and patiently by faith, but he could not do that. He just had to keep this fact in mind that he was the firstborn before his father, but he could not do that either. No matter how his younger brother lied or connived, all he had to do was to keep the blessing God had set for him by faith, but he could not do that. Esau despised this blessing and gave up his birthright for bread and lentil stew, passing all his birthrights and blessings over to Jacob just to solve his temporal hunger pains. Up to now, among the ministers who have met the Lord and preached the gospel of the water and the spirit, I have seen some of them whose spiritual lives of faith have ended pitifully. A person who has received salvation from all his sins can see the kingdom of heaven by faith. We in turn must also live the spiritual life, having faith that the kingdom of heaven is ours. If we don't, we will be destroyed if we do not possess this faith. We must, thus, live in the midst of hope, having faith that we do not have sin, and that the kingdom of heaven is ours. Clothed in this truth, we will be able to endure the difficulties of this world while we live in this land. I believe in the word of God. I believe that the new heaven and new earth is mine, and that the new heaven and new earth is yours also. Many souls will come to receive salvation later on, even though they do not receive salvation at this time. Although there are only a few people who receive salvation from all their sins when we preach the gospel of the water and the spirit in these times, people will come to seek this true gospel of the Lord towards the end of the world, during the time of tribulation. Because they will have no place to flee to, they will come to ponder upon the gospel of the water and the spirit they had heard from husbands, wives, family members, friends, and strangers during times past. Therefore, I believe that the gospel of salvation will be communicated to them in a way that will lead them to repentance and acceptance. At that time, their faith will become stronger than our faith. They will also preach the gospel with their very lives on the line because they were saved under extremely difficult situations. The time of tribulation will come about and the authorities will kill people and make them receive the mark of the beast, as the scriptures say, but those who have become the righteous during this time will refuse, saying, I will not receive that mark. Kill me if you want to, but we will not receive that sign. Then the authorities will say, then you will not be able to purchase goods. It's okay even if we cannot buy goods and have to starve. God said there will be many martyrs during that time. It would be better to be dead than to be living in these terrible times. There will be no safe place to live in. Such times will indeed come soon. The authorities will be able to find out where we are, wherever we go, or wherever we try to hide away. It will all be over once they insert this chip in people's bodies, and we will go to a new heaven and a new earth when the end times come. The just shall live by faith. Brothers and sisters, the Lord says that the just shall live by faith. We live by faith of believing in the word of God. 
although we cannot see with our eyes, we by faith receive salvation from our sins by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, and also receive help by praying to God. We resolve all things by having and exercising our faith. Therefore, the just shall live only by faith. God gave the kingdom of heaven to those who have been born again by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. However, anyone who has not been born again because he does not believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Only holy people may enter there. That is, only those who don't have sin may enter therein. Those who have received the cleansing of sins by clear water, that is, the water and the blood, may enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who believe in the righteousness of Jesus can enter the kingdom of heaven by a new and living way that Jesus consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. Anyone who does not have the faith of believing in the water and the blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, without the water of the Lord, our sins cannot be cleansed away. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have gathered here today with such a family-like atmosphere. We, who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, are the very people who will really enter the kingdom of heaven. We must live in the midst of hope mixed with faith that the new heaven and new earth is really ours. Although we live in this difficult world full of sins, we must believe that we will someday enter in and live there in the near future. When we believe that the new heaven and new earth will be manifest to us personally, that is precisely our spiritual life of faith. Brothers and sisters, do you have faith that the kingdom of heaven is ours? Do you really believe? Brothers and sisters, we are not of those who shrink back to receive our destruction, but we are of those who go forward by faith to the preserving of the soul. We are the people who have the spiritual faith to save other souls from damnation. We are the people who have already received salvation from sins and also have faith to save other souls from their sins. We are the very few people who have this precious faith that is even more precious than gold. Brothers and sisters, believe me, there are not many more years left over for this world. Despite this fact, we who are born again must have faith in the kingdom of heaven regardless of whether the day of destruction is near or not. We must have faith that the new heavens and new earth are ours if we are the genuine Christian believers who believe in the water and the blood. We must live with this kind of faith. Brothers and sisters, there isn't much time left over. Tell your family members, tell them and pray for them earnestly, even if they do not listen to your words with much interest now. And be patient and wait. God will definitely save them and us. However, the most important thing for those who are born again is possessing the faith that believes that the new heavens and the new earth are theirs. We must not only have the faith of receiving salvation from sins alone, but we must also have the faith that the new heaven and new earth are ours also. If that is so, then the new heavens and new earth are ours. How much longer do you think this world has left over? Do you think this earth has many more years left over? I wish there were many years left over. Then we would be able to cover the entire world with the gospel of the water and the spirit. No one knows when the last day is, but God said that he will inform the righteous. The righteous can, by faith, feel the sound of the Lord coming. They can feel and perceive in their spirit that the time of battle is near. They can feel that everything is being prepared. This period is the time when the end of the world is almost upon us, just as a meal time is completely over when we finish washing the dishes after having a hearty meal. It will be the end if we just finish washing the dishes after eating everything that is prepared on the table called the world. Therefore, what hope can there be in this world? There is no hope, and the only thing we can do is to live as best we can and reap as much interest as we can with the things we have. This is the same situation found throughout the entire world. I am not saying such things to scare or threaten you. Brothers and sisters, you must live to the best of your abilities and continue working diligently today 
even if the Lord is to come tomorrow. The righteous must absolutely not waver, even if the Lord is to come tomorrow. We must live, preaching the gospel at home, in our workplaces, and in our places of business. The people who have not been born again will try to be faithful at that time. But the people who have been born again must continue to work and preach the gospel, even if the end of the world comes tomorrow. Therefore, the Apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 2, We ask you not to be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. The Apostle Paul is telling us to not be quickly shaken or be disturbed just because the end of the world is here and the second coming of the Lord is at hand. In Korea, we had the deceivers like the Dami Ministry Group, an ardent eschatological denomination which were very vocal about 20 years ago. They are a false cultic group and cause all kinds of commotion. I met one of its ministers and asked him, Will you be raptured by Jesus soon? And he told me that he would be raptured very soon. He said that his pastor Jang Rim Lee will definitely be raptured, even if he might not be taken up. I told him very clearly, saying, I am telling you now as I stand before you, Pastor Jang Rim Lee will not even get 10 millimeters above the ground. He refuted angrily, saying, What will you do if he is taken up? I replied, I would not be a servant of God if Pastor Jangram Lee did go up, and there would be no salvation for me. I put my life on the line. Pastor Jangram Lee will absolutely not be taken up to the kingdom of heaven. Then this minister asked me how I could disrespect him like that. After the expected date of rapture, which was on October 28th, I went to visit this minister of the Dami Missions. Upon seeing this minister, I asked, so you weren't able to be raptured then? He replied, I couldn't go up. I then inquired, has your leader been taken up or not? He replied, no, he did not go up. I then continued speaking with him. Are the things I said correct or incorrect? He replied, you are correct. Then I said to him, now pack your things and go home. Where is your home? He said, it's in Jinju, the southern part of Korea. I told him urgently, then leave right now. I tell you, you will be beaten to death if you stay on here. Do you think you will stay unharmed when your flock of believers have sold everything, including their homes, and brought the money to you and your leaders? It's safe now because they are still trying to figure out what's going on, but you will be beaten to death once they come to their senses that they have been swindled. Therefore, pack your things right away and go to your home. Leave right now if you don't want to die. I will try to hold them off for now, but there will not be anyone who can hold them off for much longer. Brothers and sisters, the servants of God truly know when the end is. They also know when the last day will come. Moreover, the people who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit know when they will enter the kingdom of heaven. The servants of God know all things of this world as well. The people who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit will enter the kingdom of heaven. The people who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit enter the kingdom of heaven and possess the new heavens and the new earth. Do not be discouraged that we do not have many believers in our church. Do not be discouraged because you have not gained much material wealth after receiving the remission of sins. Let's not be discouraged with fleshly things. The Lord who is to come, will come soon and will not tarry. Brothers and sisters, you will walk, run, and dance in the place where twelve kinds of precious stones are when the Lord comes. Our Lord has given us a new heaven and a new earth. When the new heavens and the new earth come, God will not be giving us anything less. Instead, we will live with God and his angels in a place with a house made up of precious jewels, the living water, the river of life, trees that bear all kinds of fruit, and a beautiful ocean. You will be a king in that place. You will be the master. You are the owner of the kingdom of heaven, so you do not have to be disappointed just because you are not living a glamorous life in this world. 
You will be happy as long as you have the promise of the kingdom of heaven buried in your heart, regardless of any of these world's blessings. You will not become envious of anything in this world if you believe in this word with the faith that says, The new heavens and the new earth are mine. Those who have received the remission of sins will possess the new heavens and the new earth. We live in this world for only a short time, so it is okay if we do not live in a splendid home with much material wealth. We who truly believe can endure and be patient because we can look to the ultimate end since the end and its prize will be great. Therefore, it is necessary for the saints to possess endurance. Brothers and sisters, you must be patient and endure. I believe in the word of God. Do you believe all these words of God? Brothers and sisters, I can tell you that before being born again, I thought this kingdom of heaven was really like a dream. When I tried preaching about the resurrection on Easter Sunday before being born again, I doubted, thinking, will I really be resurrected? Will I come alive after dying? However, brothers and sisters, my flesh will absolutely come alive again, just as our Lord was resurrected and we will definitely enter the kingdom of heaven. We must believe that the kingdom of heaven is ours and live with this faith in the word of God. Only then can we call ourselves the true Christians and the people of faith and the true believers in Christ. How many are in our church now? This is by no means a small number. How wonderful this is. We have a family-like atmosphere. The pastor of this church seems to have a very good heart. How blessed you all are that you have God's church, a leader in God's church, a servant of God, a pastor's wife, a body of Christ, brothers, and mothers here. There aren't many who have been blessed as much as you in this world. However, the problem is that you are living without knowing that you are such blessed people. The bigger problem is that you are living without knowing how blessed it is to live a true spiritual life in a church like this. God has given the new heaven and earth to you who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. In a short while, we will receive this kingdom. Brothers and sisters, believe with your heart. Will this world become better or worse? I tell you, this world will become worse. It will become more difficult to live and work in. Then, will the Lord come or not come? The door of the tabernacle was towards the east. However, the ark is in the west. This means that our Lord will come at the end of this world, when the sun of this world sets. Brothers and sisters, how did you receive your salvation? What happened? I believe these things are all due to the grace of God. Believe and live with faith in the word of God. Then, when you have finished your race, Enter the kingdom of heaven when our Lord returns. Let's meet in that kingdom. Let's enjoy the splendors of that kingdom. I give thanks to God, to the Father, and to our Lord, who made us hold this revival meeting and also serve this word. And I give thanks to the minister and our brothers and sisters and all of you here. I am really so thankful. We give thanks to God and to the people here, that we can have such a precious time together this month like this.